Okay, this is my uh, roof project, and um, a few things that made this easier, about 80% complete. Um, a few things that made it easier was my pitch was a 412 and with 212 on the crickets here, and it's a single story duplex. A couple of things I wanted to point out was uh, this area here where I got the idea from Fabrell how to do an overlay. They have a dormer video that <clears throat> kind of showed how to do it. And uh, aesthetically, it's not that great. I taped it right now. I was going to pop rivet it, but I didn't want to put holes through the, through the panel. The short panel actually goes up underneath the long panel at least 12 inches, probably like more like 18 inches and uh, you can see where the valleys are meeting there's metal under there, I put a pop rivet down here close that uh, is only through the top two panels, the other panel is is solid um, that was a complicated area I made a lip so I got like a little bit of a pan that goes underneath and I haven't finished the side wall yet. There's a couple layers of peel and stick. The entire roof is done in peel and stick. Um, so I think I'm probably pretty good there. I closed off one of the W valleys, but uh, the other one I didn't. The, the, the closing off is just complicates things quite a bit. And, it's mostly for aesthetics. I guess leaves could get up underneath there, but uh, I decided to probably forego closing off the W valleys. This area here, I did like Fabrell showed, only I didn't cut back far enough, and it's kind of bulging out a little bit. The next one I do, I'll make sure to cut it back far enough. And I'm going to put his pop rivets in there like Fabrell did. Stainless steel pop rivets, probably about five or six there to hold the panels together. Um, I wish it was a total free floating system like Fabrell has. Mine isn't. I tried to make it as best I can. They had a detail that goes over the the uh, gable ends. Um, I curled my gable ends over and left their detail off because it was going to make me put a Z closure all the way down and screw it down. So I wanted to have as much free float to the long panels that I could. I have some 26 foot panels in back here. Uh, I did some calculations and uh, I think I got to about like 0.4 of an inch extreme you know one extreme to another as far as linear expansion so uh, I haven't put my vent ridge vent on yet it's gonna be a vented ridge vent this house in Florida was built with ridge venting so I gotta stick with that um, so I'll cut back this underlay when I get ready and I've got some this other stuff it's like horse here it was pretty expensive a roll but I figure it's one-time shot so they were the only ones that really kind of had some clip system that were high good for high winds and in Florida here uh, I'm tied to Florida so I wanted definitely high winds here's a detail for uh, where we came to a seam and pipe I'm gonna paint the pipes and uh, put square boots on here I have some round boots, but the round boot pulls in, and the square boot gives you a little more access. So I'd suggest that if you have some, put the square boots where you have the seams. And here's an example of where I had my large pipe. came out pretty good. I was real happy with that. Although, again, this isn't free-floating. Uh, Fabrell talks about cutting back totally away from there so your screws don't go to your... Um, um, boards underneath and I talked with the guys at the where I got my metal some roof installers and they said that was kind of crazy and I like the idea of free floating but I just was too afraid to cut back so far so my screws do go into my uh, into my board so that is doesn't allow that panel to truly free, free float but I think it'll just buckle maybe a little bit aesthetically I don't mind and uh, another example of a boot my panels were cut to order and they've come out pretty good I have to say um, 
I made one mistake, but I think I'm going to recover because I had an extra long panel. Um, haven't made this this valley yet. Just kind of laid the metal out. Um, it gets a little hairy. Just try to make it dump into a full pan. That's another thing I learned is you definitely want to have it dump into a full pan. I did 12 inch on center for these cleats in my high wind areas and then in the main field I'll go to 16 inch on center. Here's an example of 16 on center which the manufacturer recommends. <clears throat> Here's a detail I had to overcome some issues. Uh, the original roof extended down here and was terrible, just terrible design. Uh, it was rotted and everything, so I ended up cutting it back and restuck on some areas. You can see I haven't put that uh, side wall in yet. Uh, there's my vented um, stove hood I put in last month. Real happy with that. Wanted to get the kitchen vented totally. And didn't have to penetrate the wall with that side vent. Uh, so I learned a lesson here when I terminated. I was thought it was the panel was going to go all the way in, so I have to end up putting a cleat there, cover that up. But uh, I'm going to make a receiver box for my drain. Maybe have the guy down the road make a stainless steel receiver box so that all that dumps into into a drain. I haven't put this fan, final panel on. Just looking at those clips, I should have made those 12 inch on center, so I need to put an extra one or two in there. Although I'm not going to penetrate the metal down here. Hmm. Here's an example of uh, a termination. Just kind of lapped it under, crimped it so it does kind of free float and put some caulk there. Now, I didn't put any caulking at the ends. My guy never called for any caulking on the ribs like uh, Fabrell does and his rationale after discussing with it with him in Florida here high, high moisture area you know you're gonna get in the morning the dew on the underside of these panels and I can I know that's a fact because I have uh, some chicken feed that was in a metal garbage can and sure enough the underside of that garbage can lid just rotted that chicken feed so I learned a lesson there so I figure if I don't put any um, if I don't put any, here's another detail, just my end wall on the, the other side. If, if I don't put any caulk or anything that's just going to allow that moisture to continue on down to the end and drip out. The whole roof's in peel and stick, so some minor moisture that may fall obviously won't get into the uh, wood, so... I double decked this too. That was another thing I ended up doing when I was up here. I'm a 270 guy. Every time I'd come up here at Creek, so uh, <clears throat> I paid some some kids help me deck it. I spent about $3,500 in labor so far on this project, which was a lot more than I planned to do. It was more, mostly do it yourself, but tearing off and replacing rotted wood and redecking peel and stick all this stuff for 44 squares ended up being kind of a pretty big job from just me so I look at that as well that was an investment um, it's about all I can think of now a um, couple of things this where this comes there I think there's gonna be a cap I was again looking at Fabrell's detail I was a little worried about moisture here coming off this but uh, I'm going to end up trying to cap this so it feeds down. This is overlapped, caulked. As you can see, I caulked all this, but hopefully that cap will come down and prevent rushing water. But I pop riveted that and made an overlap. These cleats will be all covered. And I'm going to go this direction with the, the um, panels. Of course, this won't be vented. It's just a cricket for moisture. And this kind of got kind of funky, but again, I hope that to be covered with a, a cap. Okay. This is the two-car garage side. There's the one-car garage side over there. And it's been going on. I started December 9th. I'm sorry, November 9th, and it's now December 21st. So it's a big project. I 
laid it out in Microsoft projects and didn't have it lasting this long, but I'm getting there. All right, more to follow.